Hello, welcome back to Hyper Danganronpa H2O. So, Victoria's the next one who's been killed. All too familiar, the smell of blood invades the room. I try to stand, but my knees are weak. Leona's cowering in the corner, and Victoria's bloody body's in front of me. She just left the room. How could this have happened in just a minute or two? Yeah, I, I already have... questions on just... what had happened. I mean, Leona's gonna be the... the most obvious suspect since... since this is where she... since she was here and everybody else was... was in the armory. Still, eventually the others arrived. What? Victoria? But she just left the room. The hell happened? How? I don't understand. She came in and the lights went out and they turned on and... I can't wrap my mind around this. What the hell happened? A murder, that's what! Oh boy. It's that time again! You guys have to find out who killed Victoria! Then I guess we should start investigating, right? Yes, sirree! Good luck! You'll need it! Hmm. Okay, team, let's do this. I'm not a fan of how quickly we've gotten used to this. It's like we don't even have time to mourn. Good morning later. For now, we have to solve this. Naya, don't push yourself too hard, right? Connor and I are here to make sure you don't have to do all the work yourself. Got it. We can do this. File. Now. Alrighty, Missy. No need to be so aggressive. Kirakuma hands over the Kirakuma files to Hunter, Moore, and I. The body was discovered at 7.02 p.m. The cause of death was blood loss from a throat injury. The time of death was 7 p.m. So basically nothing new. We could have easily inferred all of that. I mean, I guess we're sure about the cause of death, right? Yeah, focus on the positives. So, I think we already know the murder weapon, right? Seems like it. An arrow, right? Like the kind you shoot from a bow? Yes, my own. <laughs> yes, what? That kind of arrow. Oh yeah, when I came in, the lights were off, and I noticed something weird. What was it? There was a word on the canvas that she's up against, and it was glowing in the dark. Oh yeah! What was the word? It was Bluebird. I'm not sure what it means, but I'm sure I saw it. Yeah, what was... What was that all about? Was it... I have a feeling that somebody set a trap. And that was what... Like, the word in, like, I guess, luminescent writing was supposed to lure somebody in front of the arrow. I... I get the feeling that I'm wondering if the person, if the killer was targeting Leona because she spends a lot of time in the art room. Hey, check this out. What is it? It's like glow in the dark paint. That sounds pretty relevant. Yes. I, I don't even know what happened. She came in, and then a minute later, she was... Hmm. Leona, what did you see after Victoria came into the room? Um, I was drawing in the art room, and then I guess I got so into it that I forgot to meet everyone else. Then Victoria came in to get me, and the lights turned off. That was when we saw that word, Bluebird. I asked what it was, and she didn't answer. 
and I heard her walk over to it. I think she stepped in front of it because a shadow covered it up. But at that moment, something weird happened. What was it? It was a light. For a split second, I saw a small light coming from around the ceiling, but then it disappeared really quickly. Then I heard a fleshy sound, which was probably, you know, and then the lights turned on and she was dead. Hmm, interesting. We may be able to use that. Koji? I hate seeing Victoria like that. That arrow sticking out of her neck. I've seen this kind of thing over and over again. It's getting to be too much for me. Hey, I saw Victoria being suspicious, and I figured you guys might want to know about it. What is it? After training, she would stay up later than everyone else, and sometimes she wouldn't even go to her room until past midnight. It might have something to do with the case. That does sound pretty suspicious. We'll keep that in mind. I'm assuming the lights going out have something to do with Victoria's murder, but I'm trying to figure out how. There's no way someone could have snuck out of the room and murdered her in that short of a time, right? Don't you think it's kind of weird that this place just has an armory? Isn't this supposed to be a school? Yeah, most schools don't have these. I guess Freedom Academy is pretty special. It's pretty well equipped, too. You got just about everything. Swords, knives, bows, chainsaws. Chainsaws? Some of these don't even sound useful as conventional weapons. I guess it's good to have plenty of tools at your disposal. Hey, do you think the flashlights might factor into this? I wouldn't eliminate that as a possibility. How do they work again? I never used mine that much. You basically apply force to the end and it lights up for a few seconds. They suck. I hate them. The fact that someone out there designed such an inconvenient flashlight in theory hates me. <laughs> When we get out, I'm going to find the person who designed these flashlights and make them pay. <laughs> Thor looks really mad. Hey, when the lights went out, did you hear anything? Yeah, actually, it sounded like metal clanging. Metal clanging? Perhaps it has something to do with the murder. I don't really see how a clanging noise in here led to Victoria getting an arrow in her neck in the other room can't rule out any possibilities, no matter how unlikely. I guess. Hey, Kirakuma told me something that might be pretty important. What is it? So, I guess the walls of the armory are supposed to be soundproof? And it's supposed to be pretty damn good. Good enough that you can't hear guns being fired and that kind of thing. So whatever clanging noise Hunter heard must have come from inside the armory. Guess that makes sense. Nobody likes the sound of gunfire. It does make some of the things that happen kind of suspicious, though. You should keep it in mind. Still trying to understand how this whole thing happened. She left the room and then something. Hopefully you'll figure out at the trial, right? Hey, if it's any help, I remember a kind of minor detail that might be important. What is it? I remember who, who it was that used their flashlights. I don't know if it will be important, but who knows. Better than nothing, tell us. The people who used their flashlights were Koji, Caesar, and you. I did indeed use my flashlight. And why is that important? I mean, it seems like the only rooms that had activity were the armory and the art room. So we should pay attention to anything that happened in those rooms, right? Precisely. Hmm. Wonder what relevancy that would have. To whoever killed, uh... To how Victoria was killed. 
I'm not sure if there's anything of relevance in any of the other rooms then. Is that is that really it? look at this. Victoria's body was discovered at 7.02 p.m. Time of death was 7 p.m. Cause of death was blood loss from a throat injury. There's an arrow embedded in Victoria's neck. The canvas that Victoria's body was leaning against seems blank, but in the dark the word bluebird can be seen. room there's a can of paint that's transparent in the light but glows in the dark. Leona claims that after the lights went out, she saw a small light appear in the art room for a split second, then vanish. The flashlights are unique in that they have to have force applied to them, which turns them on for a few seconds. claims that Victoria had been staying up late after training, sometimes ever staying up until, sometimes even staying up until past midnight. The armor contains all sorts of weapons, including knives, firearms, bows of all kinds, arrows, swords, and many others. After the lights went out, a clanging sound was heard in the armory. According to Kirakuma, the walls of the armory are supposed to be soundproof. According to Ash, the ones who had lights on after the outage were Koji, Four, and Caesar. Is that really all we got then? Okay. Am I missing the save option on that menu? Oh, there it is. You guys ready? I think so. Looks like we've gathered everything that we can. Now I guess we just need to put everything together in the trial. We all stand in front of the trial door, the usual spot. The announcement to go to the trial room plays, and people start showing up. Once everyone arrives, we all enter the door. Walking down the hall and into the expansive trial room, we can feel our nerves at an all-time high. Out of every case, this one has left us baffled. How could Victoria have died in such a short time? We all find our spots in the ring, now able to face each other. The room feels so much bigger now with so many of us gone, and with each of us looking back and forth with vain gray faces. It's now or never. A deadly light. A deadly message. A deadly trial. I'll take it all on.
Okay. Let's start with a basic explanation of the class trial! So your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone will graduate. Where do we even start? Maybe we should try to figure out how she was killed in the first place. You were the only one in the room with her. You should know who did it, right? Unless, of course, it was you. Let's not immediately start pointing fingers like that. I doubt that this will be that easy. Easy? So the first thing we should figure out was how it could have been possible for her to die in such a short amount of time, right? Alright, this is where things get serious. Gotta get my head in the game. So we should, we should approach this from the angle that there was some way to reach the art room from a different room. That is, unless Leona did it, then she had easy access to Victoria. I don't think it's gonna be that simple. Hey, there's no way I did it! Yeah, she's way too short. Now you're just being mean, this is serious! Maybe there was some kind of trap set, and Victoria tripped it somehow. That's... that's probably the one to agree on. You'd have to be real smart to set up something like that. Don't compliment the killer! Maybe the art room and the armory are connected or something. I mean, that's where nearly everyone was, right? I think, Maya, how could Victoria have been killed in a few minutes without leaving anything behind? Maybe there was some kind of trap. The issue with that is we didn't find any evidence there was any kind of trap. Oh. He's right, it didn't look like there were me leftovers from any kind of mechanism. Hmm. Oops. I... Maybe they are connected. two rooms are connected. How would we not have noticed it? I'm not sure why we didn't find anything, but there's a lot of evidence that points to the fact that there's something connecting the two rooms. Evidence? Like what? We heard the noise. Yeah. We were able to hear Leona screaming from the art room, even though the walls were supposed to be soundproof. Oh yeah, we did, didn't we? There's no way the sound could have gotten through the doors, since both the armory door and the art room door were closed. The voice would have been muffled. So that must mean there was some kind of passage that allowed the sound to get through. So it was a passage that we couldn't find, but allowed Leona's scream to be heard? How could something like that be used to kill Victoria? That's what we need to figure out. So we need to think about how this hypothetical passage could have been used to kill Victoria. Doesn't this seem a bit sketchy? Any possibilities worth pursuing? I couldn't have said it any better. If there's a chance, we have to take it. So we just need to figure out how this passage might have allowed someone to kill Victoria. Okay, think about all the factors that I know of. The murder weapons, the placement of the body... Even if there was some kind of passage between the art room and the armory, there's no way they could have crawled through, right? I feel like that would be so uncomfortable. Crawling through a secret passage in the dark? Yeah! Hey, if, if she was killed with an arrow, maybe they just shot through it. That's probably the... That seems to be the most likely... ...scenario. Just shot through it. But that doesn't make sense. Hey, might think about how Victoria was killed. Yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't have had to crawl... Th if there was a passage, they wouldn't have had to go through it. They could have just shot through it. Huh? You're suggesting the killer just shot through the secret passage and hit her? Is that even possible? Think about it like this. We don't know the shape of the passage. 
I see. So you're suggesting that the passage was, was just a straight shot into the art room. But how? Where would it even be? Maybe it was behind one of the boards that holds up all the weapons. If you slide out of the way, maybe it reveals the passage. So, if the passage is a straight shot from the armory to the art room, where would it be located? Exactly, how would something like that even be possible? I suppose we should discuss where the passage was located, and how it could lead into the art room. So, if we're operating on that basis, that the arrow was simply shot through the passage, where would the entrance and exit be? There's no way anyone besides the killer would know that. Um, if they wanted a good view, maybe it was from an aerial view, so it would be from the ceiling. I think she's on to... because, d remember, she said that... She said she saw a brief flash of light coming from the ceiling right before, uh... Right before Vicky was killed. Oh. <laughs> okay, I was gonna go through the argument, but... So you're saying it was an aerial view? Do you have any proof? I might not have proof, but Leona does. Huh? Didn't you tell me about seeing a light near the ceiling around when Victoria was killed? Oh yeah, you're right! That light must have come from the armory! So if the light came through the passage, and it came from the ceiling, that must mean the passage entrance must be on the second floor of the armory, right? That's right. If it were on the first floor of the armory, you'd only be shooting at the ceiling. Hmm. So someone on the top floor had to have used it, but what? But that's impossible! Oh, gee. Uh, sorry for interrupting, Hunter. But anyway, there's no way they could shoot from that distance in the dark. And if they totally used the flashlight to aim, Leona would have seen it, right? I guess I would. I guess it does seem a bit far-fetched to think they shot her from that distance in the dark. Was it possible for them to shoot her in the dark like that? I don't think I should give up on this line of thought. That's what the... That's what the message... That's what the glowing paint was for. They would be able to see that in the dark, and then... Then, when somebody walks in front of it, they would shoot. If I want to prove the passage really was a straight line, I gotta figure out how they were able to hit her. Right. Think about it, all of us were in the dark, and Koji is like... He seems to be trying to derail this... This train of thought. There's no way to hit her without some kind of light. And even if they had a light, chances are Leona probably would have seen it. Yeah, the more I think about it, we really are thinking about this wrong. There's no way they could have seen where Victoria was. Ugh, I'm losing my ground. wrong. There is a way they could have determined Victoria's position. What? How? Leona, when the lights went out, you noticed something else in the room that was strange, right? Maybe a glowing word of some sort? You're right, it was the word Bluebird. I remember she seemed really upset and walked over to it. Upset. Upset, huh? I was wondering if that word has holds any kind of significance. so she probably walked right in front of it. That means that when the killer saw something walking in front of the words, they knew when to shoot. Right. So this murder was way more planned out than we thought. Well, now that we know what floor it's on, we know who the suspect. That. We know who our suspects are, right? Yeah, I don't think anyone changed which floor they were on, so it had to have been someone on the top floor. And the people on the top floor were Caesar, Oliver, and, uh, me. Oh. So it seems likely that one of you three are the culprit. 
I know it wasn't me. There's no way I could have done it. It wasn't me. You assholes better not try to pin this on me. I'm sure if we inspect the details of this case, we can eliminate suspects. So it's suspect elimination time. We've only got three, so it shouldn't be too hard, right? So there's gotta be something we can use to cut off suspects, right? Maybe the weapon? If they were shooting an arrow, they would need both hands, right? Hmm. Unless it was a crossbow, they wouldn't need... Well, you might need two hands to cock it, but... Hmm. Maybe the killer still has some evidence on them. If we turn out the lights, they might have glow-in-the-dark paint on them. I feel like that might be too convenient. Perhaps we can use their positions as evidence. You're not even... You're talking about this like we're not even here. Don't we get a say? If can't eliminate suspects, then we're just gonna have to guess. But we don't even know where the entrance to the passage is. Guess we can rule that out. That's right, we can use the weapon as evidence. Think about how you shoot a bow and arrow. Oh yeah, you need two hands, right? One to hold the bow and the other to pull back the string. I remember when I was a boy scout, we had our, we tried archery. I ended up nearly shooting my scout leader's eye out though. <laughs> Wait, how exactly can we use this to eliminate suspects? That's an easy one. Who had, who had their flashlight out? The flashlights. Oh yeah, we know who is definitely holding flashlights because they were the ones using them. The ones who used flashlights were Koji, Caesar, and I. So if we cross that with the people that were on the upper floor, we can determine that Caesar couldn't have shot the arrow. I told you. So now we just have to decide between those two. I need to think about what we know so far and decide who I want to interrogate. I think it was... Ooh. Ash was the one who told us this in the first place, so... My gut's telling me Oliver. Oh! Sorry to interrupt, but I think you guys have something wrong. Huh? What is it? Well, it's about that arrow. It's not an arrow at all. Not an arrow? Oh my god, he really is an idiot. Koji, what the hell are you talking about? Of course it's an arrow. Anyway, we should move on. Obviously, Koji doesn't know what he's talking about. Hey guys, don't be dicks. Let's hear him out. Koji's way smarter than you guys give him credit for. I'm sure he has some kind of explanation. Bro. Oh yeah, the arrow! It's not an arrow! It's a bolt, like from a crossbow! Okay, a crossbow. That's what I was... ...contemplating. They wouldn't need both hands to fire it, would they? How would you even know that? Easy! I used to go hunting with my dad. We'd sell- we'd use all kinds of stuff, including crossbows. But does that make a difference? Don't you still need two hands for a crossbow? Not necessarily. If it's small enough, and you have the right arm strength, you can shoot with just one hand. Sure. All that you need to do is make sure it's preloaded. Now that I think about it, I think I might have seen a preloaded crossbow when we went in. I thought it was strange, but I brushed it off. Okay, so they already had it prepared when we uh, when we all gathered. It was a smaller one too, probably easier to shoot with one hand. Okay, 
I don't know how much longer this trial has to go, but I think, um, I think I'll cut it here, and we'll finish this up next time. Later, guys. I'm playing a game.